stories of the day, Bitcoin is falling, and we have identified three key reasons why Bitcoin is seeing a bloodbath today. Number one, we're seeing the leveraged traders get wiped out. Number two, we were a little overbought. And for the third reason, you have to stick around. It's time to discover crypto. Ow. Capital flight is coming to the United States. The dollar is going to zero. And that's what makes Bitcoin so special. You have to have gone through a couple cycles to understand. Once the price is able to clear this level, the breakout is on its way. This is your indication to jump in now. Thank you for joining everybody. I don't know if we're starting live now or 30 seconds ago, folks, but the Bitcoin charts are going insane. All coins are just seeing a bloodbath, but we're in a long right now on a meme coin. We are up tremendously. We're printing green candles, printing some profits here. But let's look at the markets, everyone. Uh, Bitcoin is down. It is down Ouch. considerably. It is down 6.6%. I might try to zoom in a little bit for you folks now. there. Okay, yeah, let me go ahead and hit refresh. We want, the, yeah, 6.9. We are Ooh. down 6.9%. Again, folks, I can't telegraph it. I don't know how it happened. Uh, ETH, look at the price of Ethereum. Bitcoin is 62K. It feels bearish, you know, all right, you know. But, hey, we're flirting with all new highs. Yeah. Ethereum dropping from $4,000 to 3200 almost feels worse to me in a way. Bitcoin only fell about, what, 15%? ETH is, looks like yeah. it's pretty close to 20%. I mean, if, if this is obviously the first dip, so we should definitely panic. We should definitely freak out and get emotional. We should throw our shirts off. Wait, no, that's getting weird. Uh, Yeah, no, $3,200 Ethereum. This looks like, honestly, a dream. Everybody was praying for these prices. And what's really unfortunate is I don't think a lot of people want to buy right now. No, people don't want to buy, and uh, especially Solana. Solana is uh, seeing a little bit of a red candle as well. It is down 12%. It is now $177. If we just look on that, it was this yeah. week, it was uh, floating above $200. Wow, I say this week, 48 hours ago, 48 hours <laughs> yeah. ago, it was above 200 levels. Uh, we have not seen in over a year. Just look at that past year on. Oh, wait a minute. We're looking at the wrong screen here. I don't know if you switch it over Sorry. for us. No, oh, you're good. You're good. All right. And there we go, everybody. All right. Let me uh, go ahead and move this. We're going to have to play around with this just to make <laughs> when sure. When in doubt, zoom out. That's the exact chart you need to watch. All right, there <laughs> we go. Make sure we got everything good here. And then I might need a shrink. We'll, we'll have to play around with this. But yeah, you can see Solana over the past year, credible. We haven't seen $200 in a long, long time since 2021. Mm -hmm. Essentially, if we go back to the charts, just see what is happening in the markets right now. Avalanche, one of the few ones with the green week, also seeing a pretty strong pullback. Cardano fighting for its life for this top 10 slot. It is now down 7%. I'm in a long... And we're going to look at my long, and I'm also in a long on Slurf, and we're going to look at that as well. Uh, we look here, TonCoin is actually flat. Chainlink, pretty cheap Chainlink, $17 right now. And folks, there's a coin I was talking about, has been on my radar, and I think it's one of the stronger projects, Tia. Uh, we'll have to maybe go to the top gainers. Tia's been doing pretty well. But if we look here, Ribbon Finance, it is up. Aptos is up. Phantom is up. And look at that. Tia, feeling pretty good about the Tia call. It's actually uh, one of the last coins I bought a little bit of. And uh, I think I'm, I don't know if I'm up yet, but it just feels too good to outperform the rest of the markets. But there's still bloodbath. There's still red candles. Jupiter, Jupiter is way down. But if you look at the seven day, you look at the 30 day, you see, okay, maybe a little bit of a Double healthy pullback. Uh, whiff, Whiff is whiffing pretty hard. It is no longer a top 50 coin. Nick, should yeah. Whiff be a top 50 coin? No. Yeah, I don't think well, so it is either. Number Oh, it hit number 51 on your screen. I was like, it's still 50 on mine. That yeah. just happened live on stream. That is poor old whiff here. Uh, Nick, should Pith be a top 50 project? Pith should be a top 20. Ooh, wow. so you're seeing a little opportunity here. Uh, too bad, you know, it is down 14%. It is uh, up for the week. It is up 5%. But wow. Might be time to deploy Solana into something not a meme coin? I did. So I actually sold pith above a dollar yesterday uh because i was like basically 3x in profit on it mm -hmm. and um had my limit order set on jupiter and it filled last night it okay all right i, Good I job accumulated right a lot all right excellent excellent and uh you know what let's just show my trade everybody we're in a long right now we're in two longs one of the longs was slurf now uh let me 
Go ahead and uh, maybe just pull this down just a little bit more so we can see. Let me go up just a little bit. Now we're good. Uh, here is my slurf tray. Let me go ahead and shrink this. We jumped in at such a good point. We were trading live, Hold everybody. Let little, me yeah, move yeah, it up yeah. just a little bit there. Trading live, having a fantastic time, uh, really just crushing it. Uh, and you can see right now hundreds of dollars in profits. But wait, we've al I've already cashed out $500 on this trade. I sold not quite the top. Uh, right around midnight, I saw, oh, wait, I'm still in this long. And I we were flirting around the $1 level. And I just said, you know what? Let me go ahead and close half. And I'm riding the rest right now. But I'm also in a Cardano long. And let's check it, folks. It could be in the negative. I don't know. We're looking live. Okay, we're we're briefly, we're, we're in the green. We're in the green right, right now. And uh, I'll probably there play around. Take and, profit. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably go ahead and move <laughs> that stop loss. Yeah. And just guarantee we keep the streak going of the green trades right now. But uh, Josh, are you in any trades right now? Uh, what, what are the charts looking like for you? Yeah, not necessarily open trades as more as just getting ready to buy and accumulate. Bought a little bit of ORDs as well, as which is, a, of course, a Bitcoin ecosystem play. And then we bought another one that was an optimism play for their ecosystem. But right now, it's just kind of looking for the opportunity to buy for this dip that we've been ready for. Right now, I did not expect Bitcoin to pull back quite this far, but we got a bunch of key levels we're going to be watching. I do not think this rally is essentially over yet, but there's a lot of very important things that we need to watch. There's actually three reasons why this Bitcoin is happening or this Bitcoin crash is happening today. And we're going to be covering that in today's live show. Uh, but right now, it's really kind of the first moment I've seen retail opportunity. We've had so much greed in this market. We ran up to 73 without any pullback from $38,000 after the first initial one, after, of course, after the ETF filings. You know, I'm kind of waiting to see how emotional markets get and retail gets in terms of saying, no, we're going to go lower. We're going to go to 55K. We're going to go to 45K. And yeah. I want to start sniping those positions. Yeah. How low can you go? Can you go down low? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, two hops this time. All right. If, uh, so, <laughs> wow. so you're talking about retail. Retail wants oh. to get in. Does retail want to buy Bitcoin right now? I don't know if retail wants to buy no. Bitcoin right now. Retail wants to buy, and I'm reading the chat right now. Boom. <laughs> Harry Kuntz. Oh, you almost got me there with that name. Uh, is Bo, oh. Bo Kuntz, uh, like Dean Kuntz. It's uh, like the author, everyone. Spelled differently. Is Bohm a good buy right now? Well, if we look at Bohm, Bohm is flirting around with a very strong psychological level, which is one penny. Hmm. And so, honestly, I mean, I, I don't think you're going to be too uh, bad off trading the psychological level of one penny. You can see last time we had resistance at a penny, fell below, and then kind of shot up and... You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see one penny act as support. That being said, I don't know what the heck this coin's well, I'm doing. I'm curious I mean, to see from chat, know, too. Bitcoin. The chat, put one in the chat if you guys were prepared for this. Took some profits. We've been talking about taking profits. We were talking about this GTC Summit. Let me know if you guys are prepared for this or, if you know, put two if you're actually concerned. Because, of course, DZ's got the first article right here. We're going to break down why the entire crypto market is down today. I'm very curious to know what these analysts are saying. Uh, Harry, people like your name. People are big yeah, fans of your name in chat right there. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you know, why is it falling? You can see it right there. Bitcoin crash. We showed you some of the charts first. We're going to show you some more charts later. And then the $100 million Woo! bet. I bet you're going to hit that like button right now. But let's see, why is the crypto market down? Why is there such giant red candles? Why is the crypto market down? The entire market fell as Bitcoin price fell below $63,000 and a large cap, mid cap, small cap altcoin sell off. I bet this is uh, for a lot of people, the biggest loss they've ever seen in their portfolio is today. And folks, don't worry, there's going to be bigger losses in your future. <laughs> uh, the cryptocurrency market is down today with the total market cap falling 7.6, almost 9% to $2.27 trillion just in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin is leading the losses, dropping 7% to around $62,000. ETH also fell. It fell 8% to around $3,200 in the same period. Other tokens are performing similarly, uh, just poorly there. Spot, all right, reason number one. One, everybody, and I, I kind of front ran this. I, I gave you the other two reasons. Here's the third secret reason. Spot Bitcoin ETFs posted the biggest daily outflow ever. Could you pull up the Eric Balchunas tweet? Yes, he actually you. has that. Uh, today's uh, decline in the market cap coincides with the largest single day outflow ever recorded from uh, the ETFs here. Grayscale experience outflows over half a billion, 642 million. Meanwhile, Fidelity's ETF saw lowest inflows, only $5 million. And then essentially, we had a net outflow of $150 million. So we had some good flows, but then it was just a red day. Well, folks, uh, after we look at this tweet, 
I'm gonna try to talk you off the is ledge. Is it the there's there's two. So we had the 14 hours ago biggest outflow for GPTC this far. You want me to click yeah, on this yeah, one? Yeah, sure. I'm, okay. I yeah. Can't so recall entirely. this came from Bitmax Research, but of course he retweeted it and quote tweeted. But Bitcoin ETF flow 18th of March 2024 GPTC outflow was 643 million dollars. So very clear that we are starting to see uh, these whales a significant amount of profit as they were buying and accumulating very early and Bitcoin was approaching those all-time highs. All right, you ready for a little hopium? Who needs an injection Please. of hopium right now? Go ahead and hit that like Throw button if you me. want some hopium. I'm going to give you some hopium here after a red day. Well, let's go back in history and see if history is going to rhyme or maybe even repeat. March 1st, we had a, a very, very red day. You can see it right here. We had low inflows and then we had a very, very red day. What happened after the red day on a Friday that following Monday, we saw at the time record inflows. That's when we hit 560 million. And then, oh my God, it's it's a record. The next day, we set another record of $648 million of inflows. And then it kind of slowed down. And then we had another record. And so right now, we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown, a little bit of a red day. Will history repeat? Now, the only issue I would say, this happened on a Friday. And then we had a whole weekend of bullish action. I don't know if history is going to repeat itself. If we had to say, you know, let's just go ahead and say, Rum Poly Markets, what are you betting on? Is it a red day or a green day today? Oh, man, I, I love today? I love Ska. I got to say Green Day. I'm going to say, I would say Green Day or it definitely, it's it won't be as worse as yesterday, I would imagine. But again, I mean, we're seeing a pretty significant sell-off. And right now we want to watch and see if whales are starting to accumulate over the next hour. So we'll know, we'll know by end of day today. Yeah, and uh, you know it's all about the little victories you got to take on the way when you see these big dips. Uh, Sky Seam has a pretty good outlook here. Portfolio is way down today, but I hit a squat personal record. W and so you're getting W's. W's. In the chat. Uh, you know you can do what I do. Have so many tokens. Surely one of them has to be green, right? All right. Uh, <laughs> no, they're almost all red. Someone uh, we also had can say uh, laugh or LMIO worse. I don't want to say it on stream here, but worst loss. I woke up and was like, oh, this ain't that bad. That shows you my history. If this yeah. is your first crypto cycle, for a lot of people, it is. <laughs> Welcome to these markets. Uh, we've only seen Bitcoin pull back 15%. Last cycle, it happened like eight times, but we saw 30% average dips consistently almost every couple of months. It was very, it was extremely emotional. LL Radio, I thought Slurf rugged. Didn't the developer accidentally burn 10 million? That was all marketing, it seems like. And uh, the marketing paid off. And it was the most traded coin by a wide margin. Slurf in the last 24 hours had more trading volume than the entire Ethereum network. Can That's because it, you're trading on 100x leverage with your It, it was me and my dollars. Blowfin trade. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was my oh, okay. Yeah, it was all me. It was all me. Do we have a link for uh, Blowfin, those who uh, want to check that out? And, uh, you know, yes. don't worry. We'll, we'll check in on that Cardano trade. I don't think Slurf is going to go into the negative anytime soon, but we'll, we'll keep checking in on that Cardano Slurf. trade. All right, uh, today. All right, reason number two. Going in a little uh, Dave Letterman there. Overbought <clears throat> correction here. Today's crypto market decline is part of a broader correction move that began on the 14th when it established its local peak at $2.7 trillion. This is important looking at the entire crypto market cap rather than just look at the, the asset price of Bitcoin here. Uh, so what did we see? We saw bearish divergent signals emerging ahead of the correct in, uh, correction. And this was a uh, contrasting with the decreasing daily RSI. So we saw a little bit of bear divergence, and that suggests that the price growth is losing its underlying strength. Now, the markets can be a rational pretty long time in a bull market, but eventually, I mean, the, the bearish divergence typically is going to play out there. So basically, it's saying it is the price moving up, uh, the RSI is moving down, you see a divergence, and then the markets will uh, kind of fix itself. Second, the, the daily RSI reached excessively high levels before the correction, indicating overvaluation and leading to reduced uh, trader demand due to perceived excessive prices. No one wants to buy a green wick. You know, people don't mind buying a green wick. But then you buy the fourth, fifth, sixth one. You're like, all right, I mean, how long is this song going to keep playing? And then you end up uh, slowing down. The also, dip keeps on dipping. The dip will keep on dipping. Uh, and then if you hit that dip on the like button, maybe I'll do a little dip later. All right. Uh, meanwhile, the Nuple, it's been a long time since we wow. looked at Nuples here. Uh, the net unrealized profit and loss sharp rise alongside the rapid price on Bitcoin increased signals a prime opportunity for profit taking. All right, reason number three, the liquidations on the longs. Uh, yeah, everybody be up. careful trading leverage. I'm looking here. I'm on a, uh, let's see if I scroll to it. Just just a you know full disclosure. I'm on a 3X and a 5X, okay? The 3X, 
Slurf is very risky. That's responsible. Yeah, 3x isn't crazy. Now, That's if you're on a meme leverage. coin and you're trading 20x, you're probably going to get liquidated. If you're yeah. on Bitcoin, yeah, do 10x. You're probably going to be fine. You know, I mean, just watch it very closely. But yeah, 3x, 5x, folks, do not get uh, suckered into 50x, 100x trades. Meanwhile, there's people in the chat right now in a 100x trade, 50x trade, and they're looking at their profit like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not good like me. Just be careful and have tight stop losses, folks. Yeah, and I do have to say on the liquidations, guys, I mean, those longs, if we're looking at the high blocks here, you guys see me use this every day with our, you know, buy when there's blood in the streets. We're seeing longs wiped out. This is very simple. If you guys are brand new, okay, don't get scared. It's simple. Dark colors are bears. These are your shorts. And bright colors, the bright pink colors, are your longs. Those are your bulls. You want to buy... When this is in the red, when bled is in the streets. And right now we're seeing that pivotal moment, right? Like a 15, 16 billion dollar delta. And what that means, guys, is someone that's used this platform for roughly two years. That is generally where you start to look for those potential reversals. And that's why when you look at the liquidation heat maps, again, very simple, guys, the brighter the color, the more resistance or support will be at those ranges. And you can see we've been eating up all of the long supports here. I just completely wrecked this real quick. Let me refresh that page here for you guys. We are starting to really eat those up on the monthly and the three months. So this tells me now we're starting to see markets maybe favor shorts and we want to see if whales start longing around these ranges. So, of course, we'll have some TA here in a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I'm kind of starting to say, wow, this might be a good point to actually start dollar cost averaging or picking up the projects that you've been sidelined for all of this. Boring. Speaking of sideline, did you get any hate for putting your AI bags on the sideline? Oh, so you yeah, sold a dude. lot of AI pretty high. You sold <laughs> yeah, before dumb. the NVIDIA conference. Look, yeah, I got you. I'll Congrats. show you this. Yeah, Congrats. yeah, you know, dumb. yeah, you're so <laughs> dumb. Idiot. You take profits. What an idiot. Yeah, we took like $40,000 off the table, put them into stable coins. We bought ORDs a little bit too early. Yeah, the first comment I warned you about at, uh, NVIDIA GTC would be the local top for AI D-Pin. The first one, whole market is down. See, I told you D-Pin and AI would go down, right? There's always going to be haters because they just, you know, they don't want to take profits. This is just traditional retail action. That is a retail quote there. There's nothing wrong with it. It just, you have to, you know, anticipate these huge buy the rumor, sell the news events. And everybody was expecting render and uh, near protocol, Ajax, all these, you know, AI tokens to have some major announcement. And of course, yesterday, there was no talks of crypto in the entire keynote speech. So it was a very important moment. And also, I did not anticipate it, though seeing Bitcoin be the top of the market as well. With you, it. you had a little bit of a Christopher Walken moment just now. These AI tokens. These AI Did anyone tokens. else hear that? Did, was I alone in hearing that? Uh, let me know in the chat if hey, you heard a little... Uh, Jason AI. Casper's in the chat. What's up, Jason? Hey, what's going on? We love uh, Casper. Casper crew, shout out to all the preppers. Shout out to all the people <laughs> trying to live self-sustainingly and... Uh, you know, shout out to the people that have the discipline for a six-pack. I am jealous of your discipline, folks. Hey, there's a rule in life. You want something, just figure out the price, and then you pay it. Jason's paying that price, folks. Yes. Uh, lo uh, love when people get wins. We do have a He's good question. Chickens. What was that, Nick? He's paying in chickens. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a question Thanks. from George. Will Josh buy back in the render, or are you done with this product? So it was simply, guys, you know, as someone that has been multiple cycles, I'm going to trade in and out of trends, just because that's what we do. It's our full-time position here. So for me, it was... AI and Deepin had been so overhyped and there was so much anticipation to this event. Jensen's the Taylor Swift of, you know, for men. That is essentially the equivalent there. So it was a packed out stadium. They're anticipating all these major announcements. And while the announcements were huge and generally at any major news event, it's going to be a major news event, major announcement. But it just tends to be nine out of 10 times a local top in those products. So for me, I took profits and I'm looking to enter now the next trends, which again, I might buy back an AI here and there. But it's really going to be like layer twos, DeFi, and what I believe is going to be DeSci here in the future, uh, which also Binance did just tweet out the other day. So I'm getting uh, excited for Gary, it. Gary, can't wait to see you. Uh, we'll, we'll have some, uh, you know, some moisturizing creams and stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, Nick, Moist. you had your own render story, right? Did yes. you take profits on render and did you redeploy? Yes. So I took render profits back when it hit $10, put that into Sol, um, made some more Sol, went back into render. Uh, and then I was sitting on render basically up until I sold yesterday, literally uh, two hours before the GTC talk at $12 and 60 cents. Uh, I was on Jupiter cause all this is in Solana now cause I, mm -hmm. I migrated my token. Um, and yeah, so I just basically set a limit order on Jupiter, a hopeful limit order. I'm like, it may get down to like $10 and 50 cents, but I'll just go with $10 and 45 cents. I was just thinking how much it would retrace based on the support levels mm -hmm. overnight. 
filled the whole order at $10.40. L- pull up the chart. This is good job, Nick. Every now and then now, l- I mean, Nick, could you have planned that better? I don't think uh, you could have planned that. Yeah, better. that was <laughs> on Jupiter. It actually went down to like ten thirty five. Okay, uh, but yeah, I mean, I literally sold it, sold the top, and then picked up a bottom. <laughs> that is really, I mean, that is honestly like really, really good, man. I just want to give you your flowers for Thank that you. one. Really I, good I 25% job there. Twenty five percent did my render bag, and I'm going to continue to do that up until yeah a year. From yeah, now. I, I remember I tried to flip my soul into yep. extra soul probably six months ago, and yep. I was successful. But then just soul just started ripping too much, and I was like, I don't know if I can ever sell and buy yeah. back in cheaper. Yep. Obviously, you could have, uh, you know, over the past couple of days. And then just last but not least, uh, you know, looking at the long liquidations, that was reason number three. So far, it looks like it's 182 million dollars in uh, liquidations, probably up to 250 million, and might even touch 500 million dollars in liquidations. Uh, looks like Bitcoin has taken the lion's share, and ETH. A lot of people said, oh my God, of course ETH is going to bounce from 3,500. Wait, wait, 3,400, uh, 3,300, uh, 3,200. Maybe they'll be right there. Uh, just be careful, folks, and do low leverage. Uh, but speaking of uh, some crazy trades, a rogue trader crashed Bitcoin to under $10,000 <laughs> on BitMEX. This is amazing. This is nuts right here. This is kind of just lets you know about order books. If you don't know what an order book is, this maybe we'll kind of touch on it. Kelly, can you pull up that chart? I know you can hear me, but just... I'd love to see that $8,900 fill real quick. <laughs> yeah, if, if you, you can find on. BTC on BitMEX or yeah. BTC USD on BitMEX, <laughs> that, that would be crazy uh, chart. epic. It was uh, Arthur Hayes. Yeah, then uh, <laughs> and then maybe uh, maybe after that, we'll just uh, roll over to uh, Kelly, but we'll finish this article real quick. BitMEX investigating unusual activity with a user selling large orders on his Bitcoin spot market. A rogue seller unloaded 400 Bitcoin onto the exchange, and then this ended up making it crash. How much? 87% as low as below $10,000 before correcting to an actual uh, price here. Uh, clarify that the event does not impact its derivative markets or its index price. So uh, maybe this is just going to be on the spot trading. So you can really like take advantage if you're like trying to trade with leverage uh, on the rest of the site there. But it looks like uh, had some other uh, challenges there. But some analysts saw the dip as typical market behavior preceding the upcoming halving event. Going to $10,000 is not particular or you know, normal behavior, everybody. This is just a short order book, meaning there weren't enough buys on that particular website or on that particular exchange. Uh, and let's see here. You know what, though? They're just kind of going over the rest of the market crash. But we got a chart expert. And I want to listen to him. I want to see chartist. what's going on. And I need to know, I'm in a Cardano long. You know, we got all types of crazy stuff going on here. $10,000 Bitcoin. You got a red background. Should I be scared, Kelly? Yeah, are we going to, are we going to 10K? Is that happening? <laughs> Never. Oh no! Up, oh, up. Oh. Your audio. Oh, you got fudded. Your audio got fudded. Liquidations on your it's... decibels. See. Up. Oh, you know. We'll figure this out. It's it's just a Kelly, bit. We're lab. Come back you know, to some you. of the the beakers are releasing some fumes. Try it again. And all that oh, TAL. Hey. Here we go. We here. Yeah. I'm still. I was doing my. Casper and I guess it rugged the audio. Yeah, so <laughs> sh- shout out Casper. Shout out to Tom Crown, Crown who's been uh, popping around as well. But you know, markets, they're doing the things that they need to do in order for us to have a strong bull trend. So let's dig into it. The, all three reasons that you just mentioned are absolutely valid. But you know, we have to look a, a little bit deeper. I'm going to my screen right now. And that is right here. I, I shared this tweet from CryptoQuant. It's a good tweet. Some- some of my own thoughts here. GBTC outflow $600 million plus yesterday you talked about. We also see minor sell pressure. On this chart right here, you can see a bit of sell pressure as price action has been coming to the upside. And this is expected. We have to realize that these miners are basically perpetual a perpetual competitive sort of field that they have to continue to upgrade their up, upgrade their equipment. And in order to do so, at some point, they have to take some profits to do that. And it's okay. This is one of the things that also you could, you could uh, assume also drives a little bit of that pre-having sell-off. Because remember, after the halving, they basically their profitability can potentially get cut in half. And that's one of the nice things about ordinals and all these inscriptions that Bitcoin maxis don't like. It actually helps support some more fees for those miners. So people should be supportive of that. We need miners in the space. Now, uh, in addition to this, I shared in the BitLab Discord uh, a couple of, a few days ago, this profitability. When you see everybody in profit, 
There's going to be people always say, why would anybody sell? There's always somebody that needs to take some off the table to cover life, to cover equipment, to cover whatever, just things in, in the world. And when you see everybody in profit, what happens like anything in markets, things oscillate the opposite direction as well, where you start getting an oscillation and uh, downward pressure in price. And this is the highest profitability that we've seen since back here, 2013, 2014. So it makes sense right now that we're getting a little bit of a sell-off. Uh, I also shared in the BitLab Discord about a week ago, this level down here that up here, it just felt like we were going straight to $100,000. And this is at 61,397, you know, roughly sort of zone. And we're making our way pretty substantially down to this area. And it just, by the way, for anybody that wants to have access to all these different signals that we're doing, we do have a deal going on right now. I shared it on my page as well as on the BitLab Academy page. Just head over to lab.bitlabacademy.com forward slash Josh. We got a 30 day free trial for all the signals, coin watch lists, member streams. There's so much going on in our BitLab Discord. So definitely check that out. We're going to keep that deal going while the prices uh, are giving us opportunity. Now, this is what we're looking at right here. This when price was pushing up, people feel like you're like you're a bear when you're mapping out potential of lower price action. And you need to, even if you're a bull, you should always look at the opposite direction. So even though this is coming down here, we also have to look at potential upside. But let's talk about why this broke down. If we zoom out a little bit, we can see on the BitLab trading stack down here, these momentum waves rising, falling, rising. This is a lower high where at the same period in time, the price had substantially higher highs, showing a little bit of uh, slowing down of that bullish momentum on the upside. Now, one of my favorite things about the BitLab trading stack here, and you can find it with other indicators as well, but in this case, we could see this weekly VWAP that we're seeing right here. Once we lost this trend signal line, we lost this bullish, uh, sorry, this uh, rising wedge pattern. We also came down and got rejected on the weekly VWAP, this yellow line here got rejected again right here. This means that the, the bigger players are trying to play a negative spread, AKA push price down and play this price back into it. And once we come on any bounce here, what we're gonna wanna watch is for the price action to come back near this weekly VWAP. And if the bulls are ready, they're going to take us through this zone and start playing a positive spread. As it stands right now, remember, this feels scary if you're zoomed in on a one hour or 15 minute time frame. We've had these levels marked out for, for weeks. I've been sharing this uh, on the BitLab stream. I've been sharing it here on Discover Crypto. The next level down is still bullish, all the way down to th uh, $54,700. This is still above that weekly VWAP level, uh, which is essentially right here at 54,000, right about $4,000. Price action tends to test that area regularly. In fact, you can see this if you zoom back on, on time, this price action tests, tests this short-term holder cost basis regularly in bull trends. It's not something to be scared about. If you're aware of it, you can use this as an opportunity zone for you know getting your orders in and uh, taking advantage of that. Now, when we're looking at Ethereum, Ethereum, it didn't seem like up here, like we were gonna slow down. It looked like we we're gonna go straight to $50,000, but same thing here. Look at this, we broke through the weekly v, uh, VWAP right here, played it down, came back up. The, bear, the bulls were not ready, ready to take this through. Negative spread still here. Price action coming down and where to 30, the target down here is about 3130, which is essentially this macro resistance trend line that we've seen this large channel that Ethereum was in for a, a long period of time. We never tested it on this breakout. We had a very light test here. So this is not scary when you have a plan. So I'm looking at that. We also see AVAX within this channel actually holding up quite well. We are below this weekly VWAP, but we're still well above this trend signal line. We'll still, we're still well above this lower resistance uh, support, I should say. Uh, Solana, okay, didn't seem like Solana was gonna give you this opportunity that I shared two or three days ago here on this channel. This box down here, I didn't change anything on this chart. This 178, looks like we hit it right on the time frame that I suggested as well, which is right here. We're breaking this down. We're sharing it in the Discord. We're letting you guys know exactly what's going on. So if you guys want any, uh, get in on that, go to the BitLab Academy Twitter page, which is at Academy BitLab. Use that Good link, lab.bitlab.com forward slash Josh. Use these opportunities with downside. Yep. You're, you're giving people to, the levels. You're, you're telegraph. Yeah, you're telegraphing it. You know, you you might come in with a bearish take. Oh, like, uh, uh, there's no way Solana's dipping below 180 that quickly. And 
And sure enough, then it plays out. So uh, people who were listening to those calls, folks, uh, just check out the BitLab Discord. I have a link for that as well. And uh, Kelly, always a great time, man. Appreciate it. Bob. All right. I'm ready to switch those, those lights green, everybody, because one of the most green <laughs> things that has happened, one of the most bullish things, there is a, a, a glimmer. There's a glimmer of hope down on the horizon. You see it. It just looks like a speck right now. That speck, and you start squinting, and you look, and you pull out your binoculars. It's Michael Saylor. He's popping his head out of saying he's trying to save you, everybody. Just in, this is breaking news. This is from this morning. MicroStrategy buying an additional almost 10,000 Bitcoin. How much is he spending? $623 million. They now officially own 1% of Bitcoin's total supply. That's freaking crazy. That is Chad-like behavior if I've ever seen it. Uh, and then uh, the top comment, we always like looking at these. I don't see a green candle cap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff there. It lets you know the power of the OTC deals. Uh, and folks, this is a still a bullish environment, even though you're seeing some pullbacks. If this is your first cycle, this is nothing yet. We've only seen 20% pullbacks this cycle. Uh, Bitcoin bull run, this one amongst the most robust in history, according to Glassnode. And they just kind of looked at the, the recent action here. And so we bottomed at 15,000 in November 22. And then we never suffered more than a 20% drawdown during its climb. I pointed this out months ago that they are all within one degree uh, deviation of a 20% pullback. We've only seen 19 to 21% pullbacks since uh, Bitcoin's bottom there. And, you know, first one to point out was a uh, good old discover crypto here. So right now we could still see a pullback and they're talking about this is a, uh, we're so early. We could even be, you know, flirting with some double top stuff. We'll get to that in a second, but co by comparison, all past cycles saw bull, uh, bull market drawdown periods exceeding 30%. 2018 to 21 even had a 60% pullback. That was uh, mostly the, the March COVID crash. But, and then after that crash, Bitcoin did a 15X over the following year. Some of the stronger alts did 100 to 150Xs, 200Xs here. Uh, and so we, we have seen 20% pullbacks. We've seen 30% pullbacks. And so right now, you know, there's no real uh, issue right now. If we go to the charts, however, folks, uh, well, hold, let, let me show you this here. This is from Willie Wu. At the rate of the macro index, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a top by mid-24, which would hint at a double pump cycle like 2013, which would then give us a second top in 2025. I still think we top out in 2025. I went to the charts, pulled up the log chart. This is 2013 and 2014 right here that we're looking at in here. And so we had a nice little pump. This is only about $250. But then after that drawdown, you know what? Heck, let's just go ahead and uh, see what did we end up pulling back. I mean, almost immediately it, it crashed very, very hard. Uh, cr oh my God! Yeah, that was uh, fell eighty percent. That was Mount Gox, I believe. And then after that, from two fifty, this is log chart, so it's hard to tell. From two fifty all the way to above a thousand. So after that top, it had a four X. If Bitcoin were to have a double top, I don't think it would four X from seventy thousand. I think a two to three X would be a little bit more realistic. That'd be like 150 to 200,000. Uh, then you can see, you know, 2017, we had a regular uh, bullish period. 2021, a little bit of a double top again. What will it happen? What will happen this time? And these are these yellow lines. These are the having. So after that having, very bullish period. After this having, little bearish, then very bullish period. And then after that having, holy smokes, everybody. I mean, are, were, you, were you smoking crack? Because... Why weren't you folks selling as it pumped 2,000% in uh, 138 days? So very, very bullish periods after the halving is what we've seen in the past. All right. Uh, well, speaking of the past, let's use that to look at the future. Plan B's forecast, $5 million per Bitcoin in the next decade. I feel Bruh. like Dr. Evil <laughs> saying that. What, what are your thoughts on a $1 million Bitcoin, $5 million Bitcoin? Look. You know, I'm ready for just a $500,000 Bitcoin because you know how much money that means we would make off the altcoin industry. It's it's relentless. So these price predictions, I don't necessarily, within the next decade, it's hard to say. I think within the next decade, by 2030, by 2035, we will see a huge shift in terms of energy consumption with Bitcoin miners. And that could push us to a price action around the price of gold. So a $13, $14 trillion mark gap. That would put Bitcoin though at like roughly 650k to 700k and so that's already asking a lot and people that go that's not bullish enough 
I, I just, I don't understand. We're talking $13 trillion. You know how much money that means the rest of the altcoin industry is going to see? Like tens of trillions at that point. So again, I'm like, look, can it hit 5 million? Sure, I'm sure there's a world or a reality where that exists. Is that world where or reality that would exist going to have me in it? No, I'm going to be on an island somewhere sipping out of my coconut rum drink, you know, not caring about life at that point because yeah. I would be a billionaire. Yeah, you got a Mai Tai, you know, <laughs> yeah. you got your hands, yeah. you know, touching the cool sand exactly. underneath your seat. Uh, Metaspawn, uh, Nick, why does it say bloodbath in the title? Because it's trending, right? That's the main reason. Yeah, there's no like... Because bloodbath is an message. economic term. Say what? Yeah, bloodbath is an economic term. Yeah. I mean, I've I've seen the super cuts. Also, a lot of yeah, use it. yeah, it's there's it's bloody, it's red, bloody. Uh, which I do have a hot take. I'm always going to say stop. bloody. It's just going to happen. I don't know if that's the Midwestern in me, and I just refuse to say blood, blood. I thought you're from California. Blood. Where are you from? Blood. I, dude, I'm from all over. So like my, I'm just I'm broken. I'm just a broken. You're like a poor, box car child. I'm just a mutt. Throwback to old I'm a book mixed series. Mutt at this point, I've been everywhere and have are seen a, everywhere. Are you, are you a street urchin? <laughs> Well, hey guys, here's some bullish takes for you. So, you know, for that projection in the long term, at least in the short term, not $5 million Bitcoin, but if you guys are coming in saying, man, should I buy this, this bloodbath? All this exists out here right now. 61,400 seems to me to be like that perfect bottoming here where there's a massive imbalance on the market because I just saw this on Twitter right now, $8 billion in liquidations would occur for short positions now at $75,500. This is that Delta gap I always talk about. The spread is so massive. I do expect a bottom here soon. So I am probably gonna be picking up today. I'll let you guys know on TikTok and Telegram and of course our Discord what I'm buying. Uh, but I will be making some dollar cost average positions into the market here today. I like that. I like that. It's a nice visualization of a little, uh, you know, just that oh, back and forth technique. Yeah, right I should there. probably explain it just for anybody that might be new. So if you guys don't know, the red line here is the current price action. You can see that longs, this green stick right here. If the price comes to this range, it will liquidate all of those positions. And it either means liquidate or the whales or retailers that are in those positions will exit them. And so that's at 61,500. And check it out on signals. 61,500 is that EI. So that does look like it could be a pretty significant support level. <laughs> and then all the way up at 75,628, uh, you have that $8 billion in shorts that you know, are up towards that upper range. So I don't think we're not going to see 75k again. I think it's coming soon. All right, uh, Skyline saying it look like top G. Wait till I throw on my uh, my shades. Oh my god, it's it's like you need night. a cigar. Yeah, yeah. Just, you can't should, even tell the difference. You just start puffing uh, cigars. I want to talk time. about stock to flows. Five million dollar Bitcoin. There's a rule that DZ says all the time. It's suspiciously round numbers. <laughs> so true. He's yeah, using suspiciously <laughs> round numbers here, and then he's like not understanding the power of lar uh, the law of large numbers, which is unfettered <laughs> exponential growth, which just sounds funny to me, you know. Uh, but here's uh, here's his model, everybody. This is how we determined it. Well, 20 to 2024, 20, uh, 50K. Well, that just means the next one, 24 to 28, Obviously. 500K. It's obvious. And then 28 to 32, 5 million. Let me, uh, what's 33 to 36 going to be? I, I wonder. I wonder. No, no, no. That's that's when we stop at 1,000x. Uh, children will lose all their Bitcoin. They will learn a life lesson. You don't own what you don't hold in your hand. Yeah, a lot of people are going to lose dollars trying to pick up pennies on a railroad track. You do not want to, you know, look, it's okay to stake here and there. Play a little bit with uh, some percentage of your funds. You know, have, put your funds to work for you, but don't take your giant Bitcoin stack and just be like, oh, here you go, give me 20% a year. There's a non-zero chance it will disappear and you'll lose your Bitcoin forever. We don't want that to happen to anybody. All right, uh, even short sellers. All right, uh, no outflows for the Bitcoin. Newborn 9 ETFs as Grayscale forces $154 million net outflow. So Grayscale kind of just... Uh, taken the lion's share of the activity with a giant, giant sell order of their ETF. So there's nine Bitcoin ETFs, eight of them flat, essentially, and then but one of them is just offloading and offloading. The reason you're seeing the offload from Grayscale, for those who are just kind of newer, Grayscale has higher fees, and they're also, uh, you know, they're future-based in the past, and people just want to go to BlackRock and get the lower fees there. Uh, let's see here. Herman Franz, I buy nothing no, you should buy some crypto. You should buy some Bitcoin for sure. But maybe buy some Cardano. All right, uh, keep scrolling here. Bitcoin moved from the Japanese pension fund, managing $1.5 trillion. So Ooh. Japanese pension fund exploring adding Bitcoin. All right, so they announced they're exploring illiquid assets, including Bitcoin to increase 
portfolio diversification here. And this is the world's largest pension fund with $1.5 trillion in assets under management. Nick, were you aware that the government of Japan pension interest uh, investment fund was the world's largest pension fund? That does not surprise me with how the Japanese take care of their olds. Oh, very, very good point. Yeah, I was going to say they're very orderly uh, when <laughs> yeah. it comes to business matters, but no, you're you're saying it's a, a respect for elders, and so they're not like, yeah, we're gonna we're not gonna wipe out the the plumbers union yep. in Pennsylvania's uh, retirement accounts like we so often see in America, right? Yeah, I mean, in America, we pride ourselves on elder abuse. <laughs> Whereas in Japan, I mean, they respect their elders and learn from them. We pride ourselves <laughs> on elder, elder abuse. abuse. That's a basement. Yeah, we've uh, we've uh, only milit like what we've done is we've industrialized at scale abusing old people. I I can't really argue against that. Uh, and some would say the entire Social Security retirement fund is exactly what you're talking about oh, right a now. Thousand or, percent. Yeah. yeah so. I, I got an idea. Let's let's make a a, a government fund that pays out people not keeping pace with inflation so that the elderly become poor and poor over time. And the younger generation, it's absolutely shit. And not only that can only hope to stay solvent. If we have a 2.1 birth rate and we don't have yes. a 2.1 birth rate, meaning we have young people to work to yeah. pay for the old people who put in money 40 years ago, but you know, it's going to solve that supply. You know, it's going to solve that DZ. If we import criminals from Venezuela, <laughs> Okay. Well, now, okay. that whoa, took a turn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <That> took, <laughs> I was going right to say, turn. though, off that, the 1.5 would be the demographics. I think that's why we're seeing that shift is because of the stagflation. Of course, not the Venezuelans, you know, invading our borders. Well, anyways, let's let's get <laughs> even more hot water here, everybody. A hundred million dollars being wagered on the U.S. presidential election on Poly Market. There it is. I uh, just want to give a big shout out to Poly Market, everything them. that they've been doing. You can bet on everything from interest rate rises to Mike Tyson versus... Uh, Jake Paul and chat go you know what let's do a live bet we'll do a live bet for Mike Tyson I got some polygon I got some polygon ready to deploy I don't know if I'll hook up my wallet to this laptop here but I'll do it from my desktop here Jake Paul Mike Tyson who should I put my polygon up I'm gonna bet I'm gonna look at chat and I'm gonna go ahead and put my funds where my mouth is here and uh, let's yeah, see if that mouth ends up biting an ear off should I do the opposite so one's, well, one's no, because then we give money to Poly Market. Let's not do that. Oh, right. We like we don't, Poly Market. No, we don't want to. Yeah, I guess. But I mean, it's like so one's one's for wins. Jake Paul, two's for Mike Tyson. Yeah. Who are we putting the? Uh, what should we do? We should put five hundred dollars on this wager. I was thinking like five Polygon. I don't, oh. No, no, I don't, no. I think it's. I, I think, think I'm gonna rigged. do. I'll do. A, I'll do. A, I'll do a full wager. I'll Look, if I'm wagering five hundred Polygon, Look, it's on Kulo. But is it rigged? Like, is is Mike Tyson actually gonna beat Jake Paul? Because like, if I had to bet my money, it would be on Mike Tyson. But then there's like Mike is man, never going to throw a fight. Bro's fifty seven. He's not gonna throw a fight. I don't. I don't think he'll throw it. I don't know, man. Netflix pays I, a lot of money. I think he has the Does he the heart money? of a warrior. But if anything can make you say, well, you know, my ego's not as big, it's eating fistfuls of mushrooms. And so the man is eating fistfuls of mushrooms. So his ego might have shrunken or he'd be willing to take a loss. Uh, look, look, 50 I have million seen, for a, 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 to go seven rounds, not get knocked out. I, I have know whatever seen the uh, interviews with Mike Tyson and he has a dark side that he keeps behind a very high wall. <laughs> And he said, these are his words. And like, when he gets in the ring, he's literally a different person. He Did says, you like, see the rules they put for Jake Paul? Did you see the yeah, rules? He has no. a helmet. Yeah, he, he could tag in his brother. Like, yeah, he gets a tag in his brother. He can what? wear a helmet. Uh, I think the only he rule helmet? that Tyson has is he can wear a he helmet. He can literally tag his brother in. But not only that, when he tags his brother in, he doesn't leave the ring. It's then two on one. Yeah. No. So then Mike Tyson, yeah, he could theoretically tag him in immediately. Look, Logan will get murdered. By, Look, by that's Mike why Tyson. it's because of the rules and maybe go huh maybe this is more wwe entertainment wise uh, like yeah sure people get hurt doing it but like yeah. how much of it is actually well yeah zach zach, brings up, a, on the zach brings up a good point he is a little bit wild he might agree to throw it and then not do it that's true that too. would be and you can see yeah. the panic in jake's eyes like no you're supposed to go down in the <laughs> second 40 seconds in what are you doing yeah, still will get, hitting me in my face look, <laughs> mike, will go, mike will go feral he will absolutely go feral if he 
if he crosses that line. I, I've seen seven. it. I've seen it. He did it with the Vander. I saw that live. All right, yeah. well, let's get back to crypto here, everybody. Hit know. that like button if you, you didn't mind a little uh, left turn there, everybody. And uh, hey, big shout out to X. Big shout out to TAC, uh, TikTok TAC. And you know what? Speaking of tax, tax. Let's give a big shout out to taxes too. Taxes are going to be due. Right uh, we want to give screen. a shout out to decrypted.tax. We have a link below. If you want a free consultation, he only does about five a week. I think he probably has a couple left. They usually run out on by Tuesday, Wednesday. So go to decrypted.tax and get you a free half hour consultation with this guy who's an expert. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just chat to him and you know, he'll say, oh, you should freak out because you're making all these slurf profits or, oh, you're you're in the red. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, check that out. All right. Uh, now back to crypto here. While I, uh, all eyes, all eyes are on Bitcoin. Turn to the Fed's March interest rate decision. Uh, let's see. The Financial Times survey says the Fed will have to keep the interest survey rate says. higher for a long time. Uh, here's him. This is where he's had it up to with the crypto industry. <laughs> I've had it up to here with all these dang ETH ETF participants trying to file paperwork. Well, after the Fed left the interest rate unchanged in January, markets are turning to the March interest rate decision this week. Uh, you know the best way to determine what's going to happen here? Poly markets and just see what the market is uh, deciding. So uh, you want to check that out real yeah, quick? Yeah, I'm going to pull it up right now. Yeah, poly market. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the Fed rate. But speaking of inflation, did you know Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Is it right here? Oh, no. What did I do? Don't tell me I lost it here. I didn't lose it, did I? Uh, there's an inflation story that shows how much you are being lied to when it comes to inflation. I may have lost. No, no. Uh, it was basically just, oh, wait. Yeah, I just didn't scroll. Yeah, All they're right. starting to shift pretty hard. So the Fed rate cuts by, and you can bet on each date. So, of course, there was March 20th, which is 1%. That's not going to happen. Uh, May here is uh, 10%. June 12th is now 52% which is starting to shift now to the July 31st. So now most people are looking at the latter half or Q3 of uh, this year for the markets, which is where I currently stand as well. And I still think and expect that after tomorrow's meeting with Jerome Powell, he's going to come out with some people want a dovish outlook, but I really think they're still going to plan on reducing interest rates three times You know, by the end of the year by probably 75 basis points. I don't expect him to say 50. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it, it really just depends on the markets. I don't think Jerome Powell, he's done a, he's literally done everything he has said he's going to do. So there's no reason for him to pivot too early. And I do see with unemployment and everything that these levels with the credit spending, even though it's credit and, you know, retailers, us 99%, we're not actually doing any better. We have to get a third job. We can barely afford groceries. We have to, you know, we, we're, we're maxing our credits. We're taking on more debt. Right now, I do believe there's a couple extra months there for him to leave interest rates at the level that they are. Uh, someone's asking, when is it? It is March 20th. It is tomorrow at 2100 CET time. So if you want to know. All right. Uh, so folks, you might not know, they have changed the metric in which they measure inflation. I don't know if you say that. They, they kind of tweak it all the time. CPI is like, well, eggs is 5% of the weight. And then you're like, eggs spike. You're like, oh, well, eggs is only 2%. And then they'll look or like, oh, well, TVs haven't gone up that much. You know what? TVs is half the metric. And so if you didn't know, they change inflation uh, metrics and how they measure inflation. Does that feel fair? Does that seem right? Fair is not a really good term. Now, Does that seem like a, a, a good system to measure inflation? I don't think so at all. But what I think might be, is should I, is it worth it putting 10 bucks on? Dude, in, on the in yes. The, in the chance that there's a, in the 0.0001% chance, $10 would earn you $900. Yeah, 100 bucks. to 1 odds seems pretty good. I was actually literally thinking the same thing. Like, God, just put like one polygon you in it. If me. you lose a dollar or whatever, yeah. if you get 100 oh, well. polygon, that could be like 500 bucks one day. Yeah, all right, probably well, won't happen, but yeah, you know. All right, well, let's talk about the inflation metric and when they changed it and why they changed it. Worrying metric shows massive inflation spike hammered U.S. far higher than reported and this is a uh, former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers. I don't know what I think about Larry Summers. If you don't know, this is one Larry of the Summers few sucks. Well, he's one of the few open AI board members that was hired after the whole debacle with Sam oh. where they had to fire the old board that was leaning more towards or no nonprofit and then they got new board members or Sam was going to leave. Oh. Larry Summers 
was uh, you know brought up, suggested by the old board. I, I, I got to do a lot of digging on this guy. Part of the reason former U.S. Treasury Secretary, too. So he's got a lot of intrigue here. But he says an old-school method of tracking inflation may reveal the real inflation that Americans have had to endure. He co-authored, released a new paper exploring the effect of high interest rates on the American consumer. You know uh, where I think he actually got a lot of this book's research from? Uh, it's actually, if you pull up my page here, former Harvard President Lawrence Summers met repeatedly with a certain Jeffrey Epstein here. Uh, yeah, Larry Summers' background is what? Uh, yeah, Larry Summers is like the direct reason why we had the financial crisis. Uh, yes. He's the direct one behind taking off all the derivatives and all the laws that we had to prevent overspeculation and gambling within the kind of debt bundles they developed leading up to 2008 under the Clinton administration. And there was a lot of ties to Epstein and everything he did with his uh, financials. Right? They all pinned Jeffrey as some terrible person, which is you know, of course, what he did was still terrible with the island. But that was like 5% and just a scratch of the surface of what they were doing uh, with both foreign entities. Uh, like, you know, of course, I, I don't want to say certain agencies because I don't I just don't understand YouTube's algorithm just yet. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, Lori, Lawrence Summers is not somebody you want telling you what you should and shouldn't be doing with closed source AI. Which is, well, what's interesting is uh, he's highlighting the the failing data that we're getting. So it's like, he's it's, it's an interesting thing. Uh, poly market, is this where we go to re-up and refill the polycule? Asking you, Nick Tater. No. No, polycule. no. All right, well, uh, all right, so back to the, all right, so the paper here is wants to paint an accurate view of inflation, an accurate view. Well, how do they do that? They do the pre-1983 system of measuring inflation, a.k.a. how we measured inflation 40 years ago. And if I had to guess, I would say it's maybe a little bit more accurate than 2024 metrics here, in which it took into account personal interest rates and housing financing costs. Wait a minute. It measured very, very important expenditures for people. Some of the biggest expenditures they have in their lives. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't imagine why they would want to take that out. Well, after 83, these metrics were taking out of the CPI, which Summers and the authors argue may be giving inaccurate data for our inflation. Using the pre-1983 method, the report says November 22, CPI spiked 18%. What did they tell the people? 4.1. What do you see right here? I see corruption. I see lies. I see Bitcoin as the escape hatch. And I see frustration within myself. But I'm just glad that this weird Epstein guys at least highlighting this. It's, it's, he's an interesting. Yeah. He's a mercurial character. I just, there's zero. Tr this is the Henry Kissinger of finance. Is is I would put his equivalent on. Yeah, but at least he's given something pretty interesting to look at here. You know what I mean? It, that doesn't seem like something the elites would say. But oh, uh, true. He, I mean, but he also had Kissinger win a Nobel Prize. You know, did he deserve it? I don't well, know. I'm just saying he's doing a good thing here. That's all yeah, I'm saying, yeah, you yeah, know, versus yeah. other people. Summers also knows that personal interest payments, which I was just mentioning, which were not incorporated in the CPI system, increased by more than 50% in 2023. So the thing that we used to measure, it's very important. Oh, what, what am I paying on my interest payments? They quit measuring it 40 years ago. Meanwhile, we're seeing 50% increases. Is it any wonder why they no longer put it in the metrics? Why? Because you would get an accurate view of inflation. Because I know you're being told 2%, 4%. You go to the grocery store, it doesn't feel like 4%. You go to the gas station, it doesn't feel like 4%. I go to Costco. The only thing that seems real is the hot dog. It's just, I don't, I don't know what to say. But I do the, know Bitcoin, Bitcoin cannot be faked. There's only going to be 21 million. Satoshi isn't going to pop up on the screen after 21 million is mine. That's not going to happen. But what does it do? It keeps the governments in check with their rampant money printing. And that's what we're happening right now. Gary the Lizard, I appreciate it right now. Why isn't Lawrence behind bars? Good question. Good question. Uh, buy Slurf. It's going to do 100x in a day. No, it already did. It's not going to do it again. Um, all right. And uh, Meta saying, we need a raise. I'll, I'll always repeat that comment. <laughs> all right. Uh, SEC, what are they doing? Hey, what do you know? They're committing gross abuses of power in a suit against a crypto company. This is pretty interesting. It's just a... Uh, what, what debt box debt box is in a battle with the sec oh, yeah. and then the sec sued debt box last year saying fraud and uh, what they do they froze their assets and a restraining order against the company for uh, you know continuing operations they said they were selling <laughs> licenses to mine crypto 
but in reality, just creating tokens with code. That's every altcoin ever. Uh, that's Bitcoin. You're just creating tokens with code. Uh, that doesn't mean what they think it means. It could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Well, Debtbox uh, filed to dissolve the restraining order, claiming the SEC misled the court about their moving their funds and closing bank accounts. Well, the judge from Utah wrote that the attorneys for the SEC misled the court oh, dang. both in applying for a restraining order as well as afterward uh, when Debtbox filed to dissolve the order. Noting, uh, essentially just noting that the SEC is full of liars. I think the today's theme should be the government lies, but Bitcoin, there'll only be 21 million. And math don't lie. Numbers don't lie unless people give you bad data. I don't think there's bad data when it comes to Bitcoin equals 21 million. Fiat equals infinity. You do the math, folks. It's not that hard. Uh, his name is Satoshi. Satoshi. John Cena. Hot dogs aren't real. Uh, John Cena is my coolest follow. Um, let's just see, because I can't always see him. You know what I mean? Uh, even though I know, I know. Hey, John Cena still follows me. You know what? I, I like jorts. I will be a fan of jean shorts as long as he uh, continues to follow me there. All right. Uh, well, you have some other ETH news. Uh, Fidelity. Looks more and more likely this ETH ETF is going to be approved. I know James Seifar and Eric Balchunas, they're kind of chiming in saying that the fact that Fidelity is adding staking to their Ether ETF application seems to be a positive uh, bullish sentiment here that it will be approved. So it seems likely we're going to get an ETH ETF potentially in May. If we get an ETH ETF, I expect it to perform similar to Bitcoin. Bitcoin got an ETF uh, approved in January 11th. And what did we get? We got like two days of red action. There you can see it right there. It spiked by the rumor, sell the news. Roll up a little bit. And it fell. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, here's January 10th, right there. Buy the rumor, sell the news. January 11th. Oh, wow. You get a green candle. January 12th. Hey, why is there a bloodbath? What's happening here? Oh my God, it's going lower. Ha ha ha, it's a scam. And then ever since then, it's just been on a run since $39,000, running all the way up to the <laughs> mid-70s, uh, really kind of close to a 2X. So what did we get with the Bitcoin ETF? A week or two of red candles, and then just tons and tons of bullish action. I would expect the ETH ETF to maybe follow a similar pattern. Buy the rumor, sell the news. The insiders will run it up in anticipation. Then they sell uh, it'll be oversold for a bit, and then the ETH uh, price will probably just uh, go on a run, folks. So uh, what are we going to see? Probably $45 wow. billion dollars of inflows if approved. I think this is bearish. I don't think this is high enough. I think the B uh, Bitcoin ETF expectations just smashed everyone's uh, litmus test where they, oh yeah, 100 billion, oh 50 billion, oh BlackRock will do this. No, it was way more successful than everybody envisioned. And I, I kind of, you know, this is another uh, DZ thought here. I think traditional investors will look at an Ethereum ETF as an ETF with a dividend because they're going to have ETH staking and just like we saw in that story. And so they'll say, wait a minute, I got an ETF that also pays a 5% dividend? I'm in. Uh, the Bitcoin ETF doesn't pay a dividend. And so these uh, value-based uh, investors, they're, they're going to get uh, excited about it. They're going to be the H word for it. All right, uh, Wales deposit $58 million worth of ARB at, to crypto exchanges after the token unlock. Did you folks see ARB valuation? Did you guys see it? The, no. the candle? Uh, buckle up. This is seven-day price. What's the seven-day market cap? That's what that oh, wait a minute, go a down a little bit more here. I'm going to move this top up just so I can actually... See, that is way too high, folks. That no. is, yeah, we, we got to fix that uh, right after the show, Nick. All right, so this is uh, the seven-day for price. Yeah. We go to market cap. What? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah, this is, uh, just for reference, 2.4 billion... 4.4 billion. So, uh, yeah, you know, there's going to be some sell pressure associated with that, folks. So, uh, you know, just be careful. Um, uh, we're kind of running out of time. Jupe hit an all-time high and then just sharp, sharp correction there. Uh, slurf, more, tr I said this in the beginning, more trading volume than all of Ethereum. Wow. Blue chip meme. Uh, so shout out to uh, the Slurf traders out there. And my Cardano trade is in more profit than ever. And I was actually waiting for this. We're going to go ahead and move the stop loss into guaranteed profit. Uh, I was waiting for some more candles to kind of wick. And then uh, we're going to just come in a little bit below that wick. Meanwhile, the Slurf trade uh, crushing. Uh, where are we at on the Slurf trade on Blowfin? Uh, $400. So I've, I've closed $500 in profit. We're still riding $400 in profit. You made $900 off that trade. 
No. What are you trying to say? If I close now. Okay. I'm riding, baby. Okay. I, I, $900 okay. feels so like what, fun. But what you're saying right now is like you made pretty much $1,000 in the last 24 hours. Yeah, if I close it right now, yeah, we made uh, yeah, we were $950 right now. If we, well, yeah, because we made all those trades yesterday, so we're above $1,000. Uh, but huge, huge news. I almost don't even want to share because I'm talking about this in a Cardano video. Well, Cardano staking ETF? And before we get Switzerland. to that bullishness on Cardano, I did want to point out too, we have a lot of new viewers, a lot of new people mm -hmm. coming into these, top mm -hmm. of these markets. And this is just a prime example of the money flow again. I, we've been showing you guys this chart all the time with how the market moves with, fun, uh, with funds. It starts with fiat. When you get a born, it moves into Bitcoin. Then your large caps pump. Then your mid caps pump. So if Bitcoin pumps, it then pumps into Ethereum, then pumps into your mid caps. That's going to be your H bars, your quants, your Maddox, et cetera. And then the small caps are going to pump. The last thing to pump on all the these charts. The last thing. The last. You're, you're, you really are on that one. Is going to be meme coins. And so meme coins pumping so hard. And every influencer that was you know telling you to buy over the last few weeks. Obviously, DZ here is the only one I've seen making money off the red days in these markets. Uh, you know, you have obviously a pullback. Guaranteed, not guaranteed, but you know, almost always taking place after meme coins pump. It goes from meme coins back into Bitcoin and then you know down to fiat again. So this could show again, guys, this is just that normal historical flow of money in crypto. And this is what pullbacks look like. You get the pumps, meme coins pump last, you get a pullback, and then you run again. And this is kind of happens three or what's the average, I think, per bull run? Eight pullbacks. And this is the mm. cycle of that money flow each okay. pullback. And uh, folks who haven't, uh, you know, uh, signed in yet, subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. We bring you live content five days a week. We bring you videos seven days a week, several videos a day. So go ahead and make sure you're subscribed. Uh, Cardano staking ETF debuting on the Swiss Stock Exchange. I'm going to cover this in depth in tonight's video. So uh, make sure you have notifications on so you know when that drops. Because I have Cardano DeFi Alpha. I'm a sh oh. I have identified two coins in the charts. I, I'm deploying funds. I deployed funds today. I spent my hard-earned Cardano on some of this. So, folks, uh, you know, just be uh, just be wary and make sure you have notifications on because these things might move and they might move quickly if Bitcoin has some green candles. Uh, here we have Wu Tang Killer, uh, Wu Tang Wu Tang member Ghostface Killer, also known as Tony Stark. Uh, Nick, do you know Wu-Tang members well? Were you a Wu-Tang guy? Uh, no, but I really like Ghostface Killa. I have listened to the Pretty Tony album probably a hundred times. Supreme Clientele is his best album. Very, very good. A okay. lot of uh, old uh, cuts. It sounds like old Kanye with the like the old uh, samples. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Wu-Tang Killer um, or Wu-Tang member Ghostface Killa drops exclusive music on Bitcoin ordinals. He's a top three member. Uh, tell me your favorite Wu Tang member in the chat. I will say it's not Method Man. That's for the normies. Yeah, uh, Jizza is up there, probably followed by. I mean, Ghostface. you gotta say ODB. ODB's good. You know, it's actually uh, not many people know Pharrell produced his first album in the mid '90s, oh, way wow. before Pharrell was ever Pharrell. Uh, let's see what's uh, some of his big songs was. Maybe I got your money. That's a Pharrell mm. song. Years before Pharrell got famous. Wow. All right, this is super cool. Not too much uh, related to crypto, but Mr. Beast set to hold the biggest game show ever on Prime Video. Do you guys remember him talking about this on podcasts like a year ago? Yeah. He was talking to Netflix and the streaming giants about maybe doing a show. And he said, well, I spend so many millions per video. If they want 10 videos... They got to give me at least, you know, a hundred million, I think is what he said. Cause you'll spend 10 million on a video. Like it's nothing. So 10 episodes, hundred million dollars. I think he may have even said 250 million. Cause he's like, they'll want it even yeah. bigger. And so now he's looking to spend in 20 million. Wow. And so, yeah, you know, pay the guy 250 million. You're probably going to have the very, very entertaining stuff on Amazon. So, uh, super cool, super cool. We love, uh, Mr. Beast here. And uh, I think that's all. Oh, Let's give a little alpha. I'll sneak peek the Cardano D5. If you go to taptools.io, this is a really good site for Cardano. Uh, looks like we switched. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, I, I see the blue screen, everybody. Uh, what is the best gainers against Cardano in the last 24 hours? Fluid. All right, so they're doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, I think, yeah, they are related to the Swiss news here. So uh, just a nice little pump there. Stable coins, stable coins pumping against Cardano. <laughs> and a, a channel favorite, we gave you this under a penny. Uh, right now it's uh, right under four cents. This is priced in Cardano. That's why it looks like six. Uh, so good job, uh, book team. Book, we told you we'll cook. And uh, so if you jumped in on that, you were beating the market. Not many coins are doing that well right now. 
And so just seeing some uh, green candles uh, feels pretty good there. And then after that, uh, you know, uh, other things. Pavia oh, is, good. is good, right? Hunt, yeah, we do like Hunt. Hunt just has a really, really good project. Hunt, you actually look at the larger time frames, and it's actually looking like it's due for maybe a little bit of a pullback. Because look at these previous levels, boy. I, I, I eat, sleep, breathe Cardano. So I was looking at this chart actually this morning, and you can see hitting previous support. Okay, I'm uh, sorry, resistance. So you know, maybe may a time to deploy some funds. I need but to get uh, in that's, there, that's man. all I got. What do you, you two want to share anything? Make sure you subscribe, folks. Yeah, no, I mean, just the that, that I think that's a straight alpha right now. I'm going to be jumping off here and doing a bunch of content and cryptos I'm picking up and dollar cost averaging it too. You know, we're starting to see that green here. I still think there could be a little bit more downside. Of course, this EI, we're getting a little bit of a pump right now in that market. Uh, this would be my primary, like my primary target for a support level is at 61,400. Doesn't tend to have to happen. Again, we have the ones open up above us, mm. and there's more and more billions opening up in terms of shorts on uh, those potential liquidations. I'll tell you, forward. I'll tell you the DZ uh, target here because if we share my screen here, uh, this was again all within one percentage deviation, uh, 19 to 21 percent. I think there's 122, 20 uh, percent pullback, 20 percent pullback, 20 percent pullback, 20 percent pullback. You can do the math, folks. You can check it out. Uh, if we look right here, I want to hit the daily, make sure we hit the right wick. And it is right around a psychological support level of 59, AK, right next to 60. And so if you look right there, $59,000. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it wick right off 60 or wick 260, AK, even a little bit below just to shake out all the longs. Uh, who were like have their liquidation right around that level or stop loss right around that level. So uh, if history repeats, you know, we might see a pullback within 1% deviation of 20% pullback. So that, that's my level right there, folks. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's all we got. Uh, oh, could you go up? I want to read some of the Wu-Tang members. I saw Raekwon, uh, Ray All Day, Capadonna, Redman. We'll, we'll count it. ODB, Dirt McGirt. That's his name right yeah. there. All right. So, uh, hey, man, we got some old hip hop in, in here. the chat. All right. Well, me and Nick, we're going to fix this screen size. I'm going to do some Cardano research. And I'm going to go buy some altcoin. Yeah, we're going to keep trying to give you that alpha. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to give you financial freedom because I want financial freedom. I'm going to tell you my steps that I'm taking along the way so we can make this journey together. That's all I got. Let's wrap it up. Easy out. Easy Ow. out. Ow.